Hi, thank you for joining us today. This is Corey Keysweater, Senior Product Marketing Manager with Forcepoint. And today I'm joined by Justin Crowley, our Principal Sales Enablement Member, who's gonna be walking us through a demo showcasing the value of our Forcepoint CASB, or Cloud Access Security Broker technology. Now, before we jump into the demo, I just wanna give a brief overview. Forcepoint CASB uh, covers cloud applications and is part of the Forcepoint One Security Service Edge platform. It's a cloud native platform that delivers consistent security built on a zero trust foundation with data security, malware protection, all built in and uh, delivered through cloud gateway, a ZTNA gateway for private apps, as well as a web security gateway. Now customers can come in from any entry point they want. And if you're focused on cloud applications uh, and securing the use of those, whether your users are on managed or unmanaged devices, this is the, the topic for you. So today we're gonna be covering CASB, how it gives us granular access control, uh, leveraging zero trust principles. So that means not just identity. Identity is gonna be a key element of determining access, um, but also the context around that. Is it a managed, unmanaged device? Where in the world they might be coming from? Uh, time of day, things like that can all be factored in to determine uh, zero trust access in a more granular method or a more granular way. And here we're looking at a, a high level diagram showing the, the general capabilities that Forcepoint One is protecting. And this demo will be focused on the CASB, uh, use case or the CASB resources, which would be our cloud apps, SaaS, um, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service platforms, uh, and looking at traffic coming from both um, managed devices, remote users on managed devices, as well as unmanaged devices. And with that, I'll kick it off to Justin. Awesome, thanks you, Corey. So as he mentioned, we're gonna focus in on the CASB component here, right? Um, Force point one contains your, your cloud access security broker, RBI, ZTNA, secure gateway, right? But today we're going to focus in on how do I secure the data and the access to my cloud applications, right? And so one of the big things we see a lot, Corey, is, you know, customers saying, hey, you know, I have contractors or, you know, I really don't um, have the money or resources to send everybody home with laptops, or now that users are working from home, Corey, you and I are sitting in our home offices right now. My corporate device fails today, right? And we got to present, what am I going to do? Or what if I need to update my Salesforce records? Okay, well, I could go to Apple, drive an hour down the road, go to Apple, maybe get a loaner, but still I don't have a corporate device anymore, right? So how do I as an employer keep productivity going, right? I've already gone to the cloud with these cloud apps with productivity in mind, Right, so how do I still get that secure access? That same um, traditional security stack, as you say, if my users are on a personal device, right? They're not on the corporate network. So as you can see- I I'm also, yeah, go I, ahead. I've been hearing a lot uh, from customers that, well, yes, that's a big aspect of it, particularly the remote workforce. There are yeah. also a lot of customers that have been finding it hard to um, extend protection consistently to, people that don't work for them, but that have yeah. a legit, legitimate business reason to be accessing a given resource. A lot of times these are consultants and contractors that are brought in to help optimize uh, a certain part of an organization. They have legitimate mean, a legitimate means uh, and need for accessing that resource, but they're not gonna be accessing from a resource or from a device that you manage. And this yeah. is a great way to cover all of those use cases consistently. That's a great example there. Um, we've worked with customers where they say, oh, we have contractors on six, 12, 18 month terms. And what happens? They have to give them hardware. I have to give you a laptop, even if it's only for six months. So we can actually go to those customers and say, there's no need, right? You don't have to give these people corporate devices anymore. We can show you how we can provide access to your applications without, without agents, without on a corporate device. And as you mentioned earlier, we will go through some of the, the backend policy how I can create rules to say, hey, if you notice that this user is a contractor, they're not on a corporate device, they're not on the corporate network, let's give more restrictive access, right? Compared to those that are full-time employees. But one thing you mentioned there was consistency, right? What you're gonna see through the, the Force Point One platform is consistent policy, right? It doesn't matter if you're logging to Salesforce, ServiceNow, Dropbox, Box, Microsoft, Google, 
we can have that consistent security across the board, right? So it doesn't matter if these users are logging into application X, application Y, you're going to have that consistent visibility. And that's what you're getting with the force point uh, one platform here. So for example, on a agentless device, right? No force point agent here. And <clears throat> Corey and I are going into a deal and I want to quickly check some information on, uh, on that account. So I want to go into Salesforce, right? You can see my Salesforce URL up there. Now, automatically I'm redirected over to Okta, right? So Forcepoint One has a built-in IDP, right? We can authenticate locally within Forcepoint. But again, a lot of organizations, Corey, use Okta, Ping, Duo, right? Um, so customers say, hey, we want to integrate with our existing ecosystem. And that's one thing with the Forcepoint One platform is we play nice with other tools. So in this case, our customer, for example, come to us and said, hey, we're already on Okta. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. We're not, we don't want to do a complete 180. How can you force point integrate with our solution that already exists, right? I may have 10,000 users, 20,000 groups already in Okta. I don't want to change that. I don't this want makes, to change the end user experience, right? This makes a lot of sense. And this is of strategic importance for a lot of customers because there's a, a huge focus on zero trust right now. Yeah. And especially if you're a government agency, you have to implement zero trust. Uh, yeah. A big core part of that mandate is identity providers using mm -hmm. uh, identity access management solutions. This yeah. is not just best practice. This is now how security just ought to be done. Um, but as you mentioned, so, you know, a lot of organizations are already invested in this, have things like Okta. So all the work that you've already done, yes, you're on the path to zero trust, but you're also simplifying things because you have all those OUs and groups that are already created. And now you can just easily put policies using those OUs and groups that are already in that IAM provider, or IDP provider. Exactly. When you take a, a tool like Okta and you take a tool like Ping, Duo, all those other great tools, they do a great job at, you know, I call it being the bouncer at the front door. They're verifying, is Justin who's he, who he says he is? Give me the ID. I want to verify that, right? But we take it a step further with, with force point, right? So as you mentioned before, our job here is to make the end user experience as seamless as possible, right? When you're in the, the cybersecurity space, you know, it's one of those things you can't have your cake and eat it too, right? It's either I get the security or I get the accessibility, right? How do I get both, right? Back in the day when you would get a piece of the hardware, right, your bandwidth would just drop, right? You start turning on features to get security, but performance drops. So same thing when you're going to the cloud, how do I get security, but still my end users don't feel like they're sitting behind uh, security tools. So in our case, what we're doing is we're saying, hey, we can provide that secure access, right? We can sit in line between those users, but the end user experience doesn't have to change. If you're already an Okta shop, your users are used to seeing this web page. They're used to seeing this. And what we can do after this, we can even trigger multi-factor authentication as well, because maybe we look and say, hey, Justin's on a non-corporate device. He's not on the corporate network. So we want to trigger multi-factor authentication, right? And there's that consistent policy. I can have one single rule within Force Point One to enable that multi-factor. So my users log into Salesforce, Instead of having multi-factor enabled in Salesforce and multi-factor enabled in Microsoft or Google or whatever application it may be, well, there's four or five applications I have to manage. We can do that all in one single line of policy within the Force Point One platform. But and actually, yeah. some really cool uh, benefit there as well. If you're an organization going through mergers and acquisitions and you've got multiple shops underneath you with different IDPs, that's no yep. problem for us. We can take yeah. that in this and utilize. So each one of those groups that has their own IDP for a separate instance of the same application, that's perfectly fine. And we make it simple to deal with. Yeah. And we run into that a lot with the organizations where, hey, we just acquired company X. They have a Salesforce instance as well, but they're using Duo or they're using any other provider. Right, we can do that. We can set up a number to say, okay, you know, domain X is using Okta, domain Y is using um, this application. Right, we can then say, hey, this instance of Salesforce use Okta, this instance of Salesforce use Ping, use Duo, until that organization merges their entire uh, environments together. Right, so again, it's a tool. Again, simplicity. Right, force point simplifying security. Right, our job is to again give the customer these secure access tools, but make it simple, right? Make it a seamless transition from what, they're, what they have today to what they can get through, uh, through Forcepoint. 
But one thing that we do even more, right, is that Okta is that bouncer at the front door, right? Should Justin get access to, to Salesforce? But then there's that whole concept around zero trust, but what about data loss prevention, right? DLP is huge, right? As I mentioned at the very start, I want to provide secure access to my applications, but I also want to have secure access to the data, right? So that's where the DLP comes into play to say, hey, you know what, just to simplify this, I go to my profile and let's go ahead and try to upload a file from my computer, right? So I choose a file, maybe I have this pain log, right? Maybe I'm a doctor and I'm trying to upload a file that has some patient information, right? Well, it's a little confidential. So maybe I don't want users uploading it into uh, to Salesforce, right? So I try, try to share something, our DLP can look at that and say, hey, wait a second, right? Your action was blocked, right? So we can look at keywords. We can look at regexes. We can do exact data matching. We can do file fingerprinting. Look at the metadata of files. If you've already tagged it um, through a third-party uh, classification tool, right? Like Git Visibility, we can look at that data as well to say, hey, if you're, if you're a customer that's already mature in your DLP space, you come to Forcepoint and say, hey, I've already done my due diligence. I've tagged data as confidential, internal. Maybe it's public. Maybe it's for marketing. Maybe it's for IT. It's for HR, right? We've already tagged this data, right? How can you, Forcepoint, look at that data and leverage that? And we can do that as well. So our DLP is very powerful, right? It's not just a basic, hey, look for keyword X and block it. In this case, we're looking for confidential data, right? So my file has been tagged as confidential, and we're now able to block that and prevent it from being uploaded. So not only can we do that access control and integrate with that third-party IDP, we can then take it a step further and say, hey, based on my location, time of the day, you know, type of device that I'm on, let's apply certain DLP policy to that as well. And that's where I feel like zero trust is really um, starts becoming real for organizations because, again, it's not after the fact API only based. It is yeah. in line. It's real time. It is it has the capabilities to stop things before the damage is done. When we're talking about data protection and, and de um, DLP, it's maintaining, um, it's, it's ensuring that data is always within the realm of control. And using an inline DLP, I firmly believe, is the only real way to do that. Because if you're using API, you're doing things after the fact. It's already moved. Right. Um, and so this is... Inline protection, I think, is is paramount to a, a heightened security posture, particularly uh, inline protections, things with a strong reverse proxy. So that's how you can do um, that that strength of DLP, not just for managed devices, but unmanaged devices as well, and have that consistency. And, and you, you mentioned that they're having the API in the, the real time uh, inline. So anytime customers are looking at a, a CASB solution, they should always be asking, is this a multi-mode CASB, right? And multi-mode means, can this be deployed in different ways, right? The data in motion, so as you can see on the screen here, our proxy. I want to control the data in motion. I want to make sure Corey isn't uploading certain content or downloading certain content, right? So the data in motion. And as you can see on the screen, depending on your group, the access method, right? Are you coming from a, um, a Windows workstation? Are you coming from a certain location? Are you coming through the web or a client app? I can now apply certain actions. And on the screen, you can see, hey, I don't want you people using mobile devices, so I can deny it, right? I'm blocking, for some reason, Antarctica, right? But again, that location can be whatever. But that's the inline, right? But the API is also great as well. While it may be after the fact, it's good to have where, okay, if I have data in there and, you know, let's use Microsoft, for example, right? You could use Microsoft as the example and say, hey, Microsoft, I want to block sharing. Right. Maybe Corey has a file that's fine today. Right. It's a file that just has his kid's soccer schedule. But he's like, hey, wait a second. Maybe I can change that file. Maybe I'll alter it and add some sensitive data into it. Well, if a CASB engine is only scanning inline, we'll say Corey takes that soccer schedule and he adds sensitive data to it. Right. Our DLP can scan the data at rest and then apply policy to say, hey, wait a second. This file is now changed. I'm going to scan it. Yep, it's now confidential. It's now sensitive. I'm going to apply a certain policy. Or from a sharing standpoint, right? If I'm block just searching in motion, I have no idea if Corey right-clicked and publicly shared that file. And that's where the API comes into play to say, hey, the data at rest that's already there, that's maybe already been uploaded, right? We want to control what happens after the fact to make sure that, hey, Corey, 
you know, as much as we love you, you're not going to have the ability to publicly share that uh, internal uh, only file, right? So anytime CASB is brought up, I always like to, to tell our customers and our sales team, right? Mention multi-mode, mention those use cases to say, hey, we can scan the data that's being uploaded and downloaded, right? But we can also scan the data that's uh, at rest as well. And that's what a true multi-mode CASB um, can bring to the table is give, give you visibility and control regardless of where your data is and where it's moving. So that's everything that I had uh, from, uh, from today's uh, session. Um, so I'll, I'll pass it back over to, to Corey. All right, thank you so much, Justin. I appreciate the quick walkthrough of our Force Point One CASB capabilities. And for any of you watching, if you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out to us and get a bespoke demo seeing the CASB capabilities or indeed any of the capabilities associated with our Force Point One unified security platform. Thank you. Look forward to speaking with you soon. Thank you.